Hi guys, welcome to episode 6 of the Dirty Knitting Hippie Podcast. My name is Kristen and I am coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area where I live with my husband, our two boys, and Guinness the Wonder Lab. Um, welcome. It's been a while. Um, happy fall, y'all. I am wearing flannel. Um, our weather is changing rapidly um, for the Bay Area. <laughs> Um, it, uh, has been a little chilly in the morning, and then, um, so like the other day I got up, got dressed, we were out of the house all day, um, it was cold, because we live about a mile from the water, and, um, got dressed for our cold morning weather, went in, so an appointment came out, it was like 90, and I was roasting, um, and then cold evenings, so that's kind of our weather pattern here, um, so flannel is, is my comfort. Um, yeah, so exciting. Happy pumpkin month. Um, you may actually, Guinness is on the floor near me and she, um, has a hot spot. So she's wearing the cone of shame. Um, she, uh, has been, uh, <laughs> pumping into stuff, um, with her martini glass, uh, Caller. So you may hear her. Um, if you hear something, it's just her walking around. Um, she's, yeah, she's a little classy with this thing on. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's get back into this. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as uh, the Dirty Knitting Hippie. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as uh, Tyler's Mom Chris. There is a Ravelry group, um, the Dirty Knitting Hippie podcast. Please feel feel, to, feel free to join. Um, there is an intro thread. There's an Ask Me Anything thread. Um, please go ahead and pull sway if you feel so inclined. Um, let's see what else. I think that's what, those are the only places you can find me, um, except for right here. Um, thank you to returning viewers. It's nice to see you again. And welcome to new viewers. I hope you enjoy your time with me. Um, so uh, it's been a little busy in a good way. Um, we, uh, my husband and I and some friends went to Denver for Labor Day weekend. Um, I, uh, we were um, there to see fish. Um, every year for Labor Day, they play at Dick's Sporting Good Park um, for a three-day run of shows. And um, there's camping. I'm not able to camp yet, so we stayed in a hotel. Um, we didn't think we'd be able to go this year. Uh, I had another surgery just a few weeks before we went. Um, so uh, the tickets, um, our friends had given us the tickets as kind of a get well incentive when um, I had my first surgery. So I was it was a little dicey. Actually, even the day before, it was a little dicey. I had to have an ultrasound and for blood clots, and they thought they found one, and then <laughs> I was freaking out. And everything was good, so we had a great time. Um, and then, uh, let's see, we left on a Friday and came back on Monday and um, picked up our uh, dog Guinness at boarding on Tuesday morning, so she was happy to be home. Had to tell her... Sorry, baby girl, you're going back to puppy camp. Um, and then we took off. Uh, she went back on Thursday um, and uh, headed up to Oregon. Um, and my niece got married. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, she got married on my brother-in-law's farm um, in front of the barn that's 100 years old. It's a circular barn, really pretty. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, got the first picture ever with all my sisters. Um, I have an older sister, which is the Swiss her daughter, and um, I have a younger sister who um, I didn't grow up with. She is just uh, nine or ten months older than my oldest son, um, so and she is super tall. I'm actually going to insert a picture here because it's hilarious. She is six foot two. I'm five feet. Um, and my other sister is uh, 5'10". <laughs> I 
I did not get any of their height. Um, and so it, it was a funny picture. Um, so it was really nice to have that moment with them. Um, so that was fun. Uh, saw my mom and um, was able to take her to the wedding. So that was really nice. Um, had a good time. It was a quick trip. Got up there on, uh, let's see, we dropped Guinness off Thursday. Got up there on Friday. Turned around on Sunday. Came home and hit the ground running with, um, you know, school for the kids. Uh, we're homeschooling. Um, so it's been busy and fun and, um, yeah, good time. Um, so, uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get to why you're here, which is knitting. Um, let me go over a quick schedule. We're going to cover, um, I don't have a finished object. I have a hoe. Um, so we're going to go over my hoe and a uh, work in progress. Um, I have some acquisitions uh, with FiberShare, and I have, um, this is really funny, I decided it'd be a lot of fun to introduce you to different knitters um, in my knitting community, and uh, people that I craft with, and if, you know, I come across you guys, and, you know, I have a camera, maybe we do we do this with you. But I um, came up with something called Five Things. Um, so Five Things, um, and it's a series of questions that I will ask uh, various knitters. It's a quick little segment, um, and yeah, I'll get to that um, in a little bit. It was a lot of fun. Funny. You may never come back here again after this one, <laughs> but it was a great um, intro to Five Things. So, um, and then my tip. Um, that I usually like to get. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Um, so my hoe, um, I had mentioned in a previous podcast that I, um, I love the look of hand knit socks. Um, I didn't understand why, um, I didn't like to knit them. Um, I don't like to pick up stitches and that could be part of it because my first pair of socks included a heel flap um, so you got to pick up the stitches for that and it was actually a worsted pair of socks um, and I really wanted to enjoy knitting socks because it's a really nice portable project um, and it's a useful project who doesn't love socks um, well I guess some people don't like socks but I like socks um, and there's a ton of beautiful sock yarn um, out there so you know, I really, really, there's Guinness in her cone. She's trying to scratch and shake. Um, so I, um, my goal was to learn different heels and toes. I tend to be more of a technical, I like technical knitting. Um, I like, um, learning techniques. Um, I'm not someone who's like, oh, I want to learn a stitch. That I know there are a lot of knitters who really like to concentrate on learning stitches. Um, that's not me. Um, I like to pick out patterns and say, wow, that's a beautiful stitch, and knit the stitch in the pattern, but I don't just practice stitches. Um, so I kind of felt like I had gotten into a comfort zone of knitting just after the heel, and I was kind of tricking myself by saying, well, it's a different heel if I use different techniques in knitting that heel and this is technically true um but I'd gotten stuck in afterthought heel and um, so I um had used two different afterthought heels um on a number of socks and uh, had played with the square toe and the um rounded toe and I uh, decided okay time to bust out of that comfort zone and you're really not honoring your your goal for 2017 and I am um, I'm tackling the heel flap I I do not like heel flaps or I didn't like heel flaps um the one thing I found with the afterthought heel was that I was able to alter it so it fit um I have a little bit of a high arch um but a narrow heel um and a narrow foot I have had a big feet for a short person, <laughs> but they're long and thin. Um, so I wear like, 
anywhere from a seven and a half to an eight, and I'm five foot tall, so I got some boats um, for a short person. Um, and uh, yeah, so I decided heel flap um, was was my next tackle. So I did it. Um, and the other thing I decided, because I was getting stuck in that comfort zone of um, finding a heel and knitting multiple pairs of socks, was that I will only knit two pairs of socks with each heel that I learn. Because that way, um, I wanted to be proficient, and I figure two pairs, four socks, so doing a, a technique four times should be... Um, a. It, for me, that would be um, proficiency equivalent. Um, I probably could get away with one because, but I wanted it to be perfect. Not perfect, but well done. Um, and so that I could use these techniques in future projects. Some of this stuff you can use um, with other um, projects. So like, you know, picking up stitches, that's a, a really important skill to have as a knitter. I will use that in other types of garment um, knitting or you know toys or I mean you would use it in a lot of applications. So it's something that I should be doing more um, and be doing well. So with that being said, that long intro to my sock, which is only one sock, um, I present the um, Vanilla Latte Socks by um, Let's see, uh, Virginia Rose Jeans. Um, and um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it's, here, I'll hold it kind of close so you can see. Um, it's got a really nice run of um, stockinette stitches, so knit stitches, and mixed in with little pearl bumps, which um, kind of gives you this ribbed sock. What I really like about rib socks is that um, I have thin ankles, and so um, they tend to stay up a little bit better on me. Um, I do a two by two rib for two inches, um, and I actually do that on all my socks because um, they stay up a little bit better. And then um, this is a six inch cuff, a uh, six inch leg, and this is my afterthought. This side is not as clean as this side. And, but my, um, not afterthought, it's a heel flap. It's um, a slip stitch stockinette heel flap. So it gives you like a little bit of a rib. Um, and on this one, I did a star toe. That's also kind of new for me. First time I've done that. Um, the star toe is... It reminds me of like the decreases on a hat. Um, you know, when you do a decrease on a hat, it gives you a little bit of a swirl. Um, and I really like that. Um, the one thing I do not like is that you end up with like this little lip at the, the very end of it, um, like you would on the top of the hat. Um, and so I'll wear it and see how I like it. Um, I am going to be doing this again, obviously, on the second sock. Um, and I guess, you know, true to my word, I've got to do it on another pair of socks. Um, if I really, if I, if I end up wearing these and I hate that little thing on the end, I may rip the toes out at some point um, and replace it. But I need to learn to do it. So it's on there. Um, yeah. So this uh, yarn is by White Birch Fiber. Um, it is, the colorway is does this black look, wait, does this rainbow look, make my black look big? Um, and it is, um, let's see if I have, yeah, white birch fiber arts. Um, it is a 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. Um, it's her tag. Oh, friends, oops, friends don't let friends craft with insipid yarn. Um, I love her yarn. Um, and it's a lot of fun. The, um, I picked this up at Stitches um, last year. So I always visit her booth. Um, I think this is, I, this and I have another, um, I bought a, a gradient sock set 
that I was in love with. So um, I only have those two. I'm going to have to pick some up again in February. Um, so please be there, White Birch Fiber Arts, so I can get some of your beautiful yarn. Um, the heels and toes on this, um, I used opal. Um, and um, yeah, it's opal sock yarn. Um, and one of the things I really kind of, um, the reason I like to use coordinating or uh, contrasting heels and toes is that it's easy to pick them out if you get holes. Um, I'm not finding that such a nice clean look with um, this heel flap here. Um, I'm used, because you do the heel flap and then you do the gusset and it just, I don't know. I, to me, aesthetically, it's not as pleasing to the eye as like an afterthought heel and toe, um, or heel. Um, the toe's fine. Um, so, you know, I'll wear it. The, the one thing I really like about this heel, though, is that because it's a slip stitch, it's thicker. So it's going to wear a little bit um, more sturdy than, um, like, I would say the afterthought because that's just stockinette. Um, but this is nice and cushy, um, so I do like that. Um, and you know what? It, I hate to say it, but it fits me better than the afterthought, even though I don't like it. Um, but it's a. The one thing I found is that I'm actually enjoying the heel flap. Um, so there's a lot of things I'm enjoying about it, um, even if I don't think it's the most beautiful heel in the world. Um, so. You know, I'll live with it. I'll try these um, and go from there. This may end up being my default. I don't know. Um, so the other sock I have, um, it's in progress. I This was actually the first one I did, and I got so frustrated because I was trying to figure out a way of um, knitting this heel flap and including the gusset with the contrasting yarn, and I didn't come up with that, so I'm actually having to rip this back. Um, and it's, yeah, it's in progress. So it doesn't look awesome. Um, I am knitting these on 2.25 millimeter, um, US size one um, needles. These are done on signatures. The other, this sock was done on, um, I think my Haya Haya. It was probably a mix of Haya Haya and Chao Gu um, TPNs because they kind of look the same. I have a really hard time telling them apart um, unless I really dig and look for the engraving on it. And um, so I knit my socks concurrently. Ah, sorry, hit the hit the laptop. Um, and so um, usually what I do is I'll do like the cuff on one, I do the cuff on the other, I do the leg on one, I do the leg on the other. Um, this one, I knit the heel and then jacked it up. So I went, nope, I will come back to that. And then finish the other sock. Um, so um, this is a little bit of a timeout, um, and I'll go back to tinking when I have some time to just sit and uh, pick stitches. Um, cause yeah, I can't. It, for me, I tink back. Um, and that's kind of relaxing in a way. Um, can you hear Guinness? <laughs> She's demanding to come in. Hold on! <laughs> She's she's inside. We're dealing with a little bit of doggy dementia. Um, she's 12. So she does what I call the in and out game. She'll go outside, come inside, go outside, come inside. Um, forgets why she goes outside. She may have to go to the bathroom. She doesn't remember. Um, so um, I just put her in her bed. Um, hopefully we're done with in and out. She's been doing that all morning. Um, so anyway, let's get back to knitting. Um, so I, um, that's my only hoe. Yeah. Next podcast, uh, we'll be done with that pair of socks, um, and you'll get to see the, the pair. Maybe I'll hold my feet up. Done. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, so this, uh, one thing I didn't show you was um, I am housing those socks in this bag. Um, it is, um, 
my donut bag. It's by Dana Herbert, and it's made in Portland, Oregon. Um, I uh, bought this as a set. Um, it was for National Donut Day, and um, I saw it on um, Despondent Dyes. I follow her on Instagram if you don't. Check her out because she's one of my favorite dyers. Um, but she had done a collaboration uh, where she dyed some skeins of yarn. And um, Dana Herbert made some bags. And um, Sucre Sucre Miniatures had this really cute um, Donut Progress Keeper. Um, yeah, follow them or her on Instagram as well. She's got some really cute uh, progress keepers and then it was sold through stash um well stash is a yarn shop in corvallis oregon which is where my mom was living and um, she lived there for like 30 years um and so every time i go up there i visit stash and it's actually one of my very favorite yarn shops ever um so every time i go up there i have to visit um so yeah that's what i'm housing my socks in this bag um, so that's kind of like a hoe whip, ho whip, um, which is a nice segue into my other whips. I have two others. Um, I, um, I'm kind of feeling a little bit of a knit nesting coming on here with the change in weather. Um, so I... And wanting to cast on all the things, which for me is kind of a big deal because I tend to be a monogamous knitter. Like, I went through and I kitted up, like, a whole bunch of projects, and I've blown through a lot of those. Um, but I was finding I'm only working on one at a time for the most part. And so, um, but right now I'm feeling like knitting a lot of things. So I cast on another pair of socks, um, and this is... This is a bag I picked up at um, Stitches a couple years ago. It's by Erin Lee. Very cute. Um, just a muslin inside. Um, and I like it because it's kind of floppy. You can fold, fold it down. Um, which often I do so that I could work out of my bags. Um, so, yep. Um, so, anyway. Um, this is ah, kind of a mess to bring out because it's a sock link, um, and it's kinky, not kinky, but kinky yarn, and um, this is amazing and gorgeous, um, I'm loving the speckle of this yarn, um, these are a nice ribbed sock, that's the name of the pattern, and it's, um, the designer is Glenna C. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and it's it's a relaxing knit. It's, you know, sometimes you just need something that um, you can just kind of like sit there and not think. You're just knitting, knitting, knitting. And um, it's been an enjoyable knit for me. Um, so let's see. Um, I'm going to show you first. It's a sock blank and I'm, I posted this on Instagram and I had um, and I posted it in a couple of the um, knitting groups that I belong to on Facebook and um, the question I immediately got was what's a sock blank? Um, so if you don't if you haven't seen one or you you've never heard that term um, it is it looks like kind of like a scarf but it is this nice long piece of stockinette um, that um, this was hand stamped and dyed um, by Gail's Art, um, and um, so they take a, it's a bare yarn, so it's like a neutral color, and then they dye it, and they might stamp it, they might, you know, whatever method they use to dye, they'll, they'll use on these sock blanks. But the fun thing is that sometimes they'll have patterns. And I've seen some beautiful artwork, um, just hand painted or stamped. And as you knit, you just pull um, the yarn off. So you end up with like knitting with this kinky yarn. Um, 
but the pattern does not transfer to what you are knitting. So you end up with this beautiful speckled effect. Um, and that's a lot of fun um, to see it kind of transform into something different than what you see visually um, on the uh, sock blank. So I've really enjoyed um, my first sock blank. Um, it was something that I really wanted to try. And so um, I was excited to find these um, beautiful colors from Gail's um, on her Etsy shop. Um, and so it's a, a, the other thing is they come as single or double. So if you get a double, then you get two strands. And so you can knit two socks at a time. I got a single. Um, if I purchase another sock blank, I think I'll go with a double just because that's how I tend to knit socks. I like to knit them on DPNs concurrently and so um, I'm doing one at a time which is fine but and and it lets you savor it a little bit longer but I like to do it two at a time so then I end up with a pair of socks at the end. I don't suffer from second sock syndrome um, at all. I mean it's kind of, I'm okay knitting a sock and then going back and knitting another one um, which is shocking because I don't knit the same pattern twice generally. I don't like to do that, but for socks it seems okay because it's a match pair. Um, so um, the one thing I have noticed with um, knitting with a sock blank is it kind of jacks with your tension a little bit. Um, and so um, it that to me um, has been a little bit of an adjustment, more of a mind adjustment because I know I have pretty spot on tension, like when I knit stocking at it's it's even. Um, I know when I block this, it will straighten out. But the one thing, I don't know if you can tell, um, so one thing that I'm noticing is it almost looks like it has this bias effect, um, which I'm assuming is because I'm using the sock blank. I don't know what else would cause that. Um, but it's happening, and um, initially it, it was kind of driving me nuts um, I struggle with perfectionism. Um, I grew up playing violin, um, and I played for, you know, 15 years, 14 years, and so, um, I tend to be perfectionistic in a lot of things, um, and that has transferred to my knitting, and so when I see something that's visually not correct, it drives me nuts. Um, so the other thing is that, you know, when I look at my stitches, they're a little wonky. I know it's because the yarn's kinky. Um, so I just had to adjust that mindset of what I was seeing. When I block it, it'll be fine. I've seen other projects on both Ravelry and um, Instagram where they've used the blanks. I've seen the effect before and after. I know I will be okay. Um, if not, it'll be a gift. <laughs> Here, have some jacked up socks. They're not my best work, um, but you'll enjoy them. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so, on these, I did a two by two, um, two inch cuff. Um, and then this, uh, let me throw my hand in, do the sock puppet. So, you can see it's just a nice, it, it's a nice rib sock. Um, and so, like I've mentioned before, it should stay up quite well on my leg. Um, I um, generally do a six inch leg, I did a five, because um, I'm finding that the six is, is nice and tall, but I wanted something a little tiny bit shorter just to try that out. Um, so um, these ones, I am also using a heel flap. It is a slipped um, knit, a uh, slipped knit stitch, um, like a ribbed heel flap. Um, and uh, just turn the heel like a boss um, and uh, picked up the stitches for my gusset no problem uh, thanks to call it I um, tapped into her yesterday at knitting and um, the one thing that I don't see it on here um, I was noticing that I was getting this tiny little ridge on um, my other, one of my other socks, when I picked up the stitches and she gave me a hint, she said pick up like on the outside of um, those 
those stitches and you won't get that ridge on the outside. It'll be on the inside. Um, so that was, that was really helpful. Um, and she said, pick up both the legs instead of one and it'll be stronger. So thank you, Colette. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so I did that and, um, there you are. Um, and so now I am at the point where I will start, um, doing my gusset. Um, one thing that happened yesterday, so I was working, I took this to knitting and, um, I was picking up the last stitch and I broke the tip off of my needle. Oh, bull crap. <laughs> I was so mad. And I didn't have another DPN with me, of course. So that's the way it always works. So I was done knitting because it's the only thing I brought. Um, luckily, it was at the end. So um, these needles are uh, Knitter's Pride Royale, um, size 2.25 millimeter. That's my default sock DPN, size US, or US1. Um, they're new. Um, so you can imagine how excited I was when I broke that tip off. Um, I'm not a tight knitter. I'm a pretty close to gauge knitter. I used to be a tight knitter. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was just picking up the, the stitch and the, this piece, this metal piece just snapped right off. So it wasn't even like I could stick it back on the wood. Um, I will be contacting Knitter's Pride tomorrow um, and letting them know that their stuff broke. Um, I like the feel of the needles. Um, and I mentioned before, I really like to try different needles. Um, if there's a new needle, I want to try it. Um, I typically enjoy knitting with... Um, I enjoy... Um, trying new needles. I use metal for the most part. Um, but I wanted to try these because they were different. Um, and I picked this up, this set up at like Webs. Uh, no, not Webs. Um, I've never been to Webs. I, I was at Jimmy Beans, sorry. Um, so I picked them up when I was there in, uh, May. June. I was there June. Um, and um, I had never seen these in person, and um, they were, they're really pretty. Um, the tips are not as sharp as I typically like, um, but they're nice. Um, because they're wood, they're a little bit flimsy. Um, they are a laminated birch, I believe. Yeah, I think they are. Um, so they have a little bit of a, a laminate feel. Um, which uh, kind of goes along with like um, Knit Picks is a laminate, uh, Knitter's Pride has a laminate, uh, Knit Pro I believe has a laminate. Um, so if you've used any of those, they all kind of feel very similar. Um, but because they're wood, they're very bendy. They're not as sturdy as metal. Um, so I will finish out um, the sock and the other using, um, I'm trying to think what I have. I don't use wood needles. Um, I have a carbon, so I'm going to have to use, I'll have to grab one of those to um, use because I can't use that other, yeah, I can't use that other TPN until I get it replaced. Um, so, so yeah, these have, these have been enjoyable. Um, I have a picture of the pattern so you can see what it will look like um, when it is done. Um, let's see. Yeah. So there we are. It's a nice rib sock. Glenacy. Um, so thank you for writing a very simple pattern. I'm enjoying this. Um, yeah, so that's one work in progress. And my next, well, my last one um, is being stored in a Halloween bag. My own, I only have one Halloween or one holiday bag, um, but this is a bag that I got from you so and so. I love her stuff. Um, I have uh, a few 
of hers. Um, but I saw this on her shop quite a while ago and um, when she started introducing her holiday stuff and I purchased it. Um, so the inside is like a uh, graphic um, Halloween things. Has a nice pocket in here. Um, store stuff. And um, this is a mess, <laughs> of course. Um, and let's see, Should I, it's the um, antler hat by Tin Can Mix. Um, so that is also a free pattern on Ravelry. And um, I believe there are some tutorials. Um, yeah, so they include tutorials with their patterns. So I haven't actually looked at any of their tu tutorials. Um, but it's nice to have them um, connected to a pattern, especially if you're a new knitter. Or you may not be a new knitter, but you're trying new techniques for the first time. It's nice to have um, those tutorials linked into patterns. I really, really like that. Um, it's actually how I learned to knit socks. Fairypink.com has um, some patterns with video tutorials linked in her patterns. So you're knit, knit, knit. And let's say you keep your patterns on your computer or your iPad. You just click on the link and it takes you straight to the YouTube to YouTube tutorial. And you can complete that um, section while you're watching the um, tutorial. And then you go back to your pattern, which is really, really streamlined, smooth, awesome. Um, so the Antler Toque by, uh, tin, oh, I don't want to show that, by Tin Can Knits. Um, and let's see if I can get a better picture here. So there you go. Um, so I am using, um, some yarn that I picked up as stitches. Um, this, let's see, 20, 2017 stitches, um, Stitches West, in case jumping in, in the middle but it's the one in the bay area and um, so this is um this is from liberty 2.0 that's the name of the sheep um who happens to live on the ross farm in pennsylvania um and the ross farm is a um I don't know, do they call it a historical farm? Heritage farm? Um, it is a farm that has been passed down for several generations. Um, a sheep farm. And it used to be a meat uh, farm. And so um, the current shepherdess um, decided that she wanted some... Um, they were just tossing out the wool and... And she's like, well, that's a bit wasteful. So, and she has, um, they, they still have meat um, stock, but they also have dual purpose. So where they may have um, a sheep where their meat, they will also use their wool. Um, but she also has some heritage and rare breeds that are just for wool. And so Liberty 2.0 happens to be a Jacob sheep. Um and so this is Liberty, um, and Liberty is going to be living on my head. Um, <laughs> and it's a three-ply worsted, 250 yards. Um, this is how much I've done so far of this toque. Um, the one, it's, um, I would say this is a really, um, a nice pattern for someone who is, um, just getting into cables. Um, so it's a really easy cable. It's a six, let me see, that. yeah, six, six round repeat. Um, so that's nice, pretty easy to remember. Um, so it gives you experience with a cable needle, um, or if you're really handy, um, not using a cable needle. I'm not graceful, so I use one every time. Um, and let's see, um, what else does it teach you? Knitting in the rounds. Um, I would say this is a really, um, it's a good beginner pattern. Maybe a, you've knit a hat um, before and you want to add like a new skill that would be adding 
adding the cables. Um, so it's a nice beginner-ish pattern. Um, I am using um, my Haya Haya Sharps because they are a four inch tip. Um, and this is something that I just started doing. So um, a lot of times for hats when you're knitting the ribbing, um, which I've completed and I'm like two repeats in, maybe three repeats in, um, a lot of times you'll knit the ribbing on a smaller size needle and then go up to do the actual hat so that it's a, it, the ribbing is a little bit tighter on your head um, and then you have a little bit more uh, girth for your head. I have a pin head, so I could probably get away on like a six the whole way, or the same, you know, small size the way the whole way. And um, I'm using a size. I used a size six for the um, the ribbing, and I went to to an eight for the actual hat pattern. Um, one thing that I um, did, and this is a sixteen inch cable, um, or a sixteen inch needle. So um, the cable itself is not. Uh, 16 inches, the tips are four, so you have eight, and then you have this short uh, eight inch cable that makes a 16 inch needle. Um, I, instead of replacing both tips, I just replaced my right tip. So my feeder tip is still the smaller size, um, and my right tip is the larger size. So it's a little bit easier to pull those stitches off my left. It does not affect your gauge. Um, at least it doesn't affect mine. But um, it was really helpful that first setup round where you are um, starting to knit with a larger size needle, um, stitches that were created on a needle that was two sizes smaller. So um, that was... I find that helpful. Um, I have um, I have um, my stitch marker um, that I got these at Stitches as well. Um, they were kind of my naughty stitch markers. My first podcast, I um, ripped the Band-Aid off and showed I have zero filters. Well, this was one of those stitch markers, and it said, bitch, please, um, which is... <laughs> Say my husband says all the time. He doesn't say it to me. He doesn't call me that. Um, but he jokes around and says it all the time. Um, so in honor of my husband. Um, so this one is for me. And um, I will be making a similar hat for my husband. Um, he's got a ginormous noggin. Um, and so he is, um, it's the start of hunting season. And he is just kind of getting really into hunting right now. Um, and so I'm going to make him an antler hat in um, blaze orange. I have to find some blaze orange. I'm not sure. I have never purchased blaze orange. I'm, I'm mostly vegetarian. Um, I will occasionally eat chicken. So... Um, a little bummed that I wouldn't eat when he's hunting. I'm like, why would I eat it if you hunt it if I don't eat it when it comes from the store? <laughs> I'm not eating meat. Um, and it's not, it's not like an ethical thing. I just don't like the taste of it. So, um, so he will be getting a hat to hopefully keep him safe. Um, he is, I don't know if he's done it yet, but he's put in for a deer tag um, this year. Um, he's actually, he's excited. Last night, um, he won a, uh, I don't know, do they call them tags for duck? I don't know. But he, he won opening day duck tag. I don't know. I don't even know. But he's going duck hunting um, in a couple weeks. Um, so that'll be exciting for him. <laughs> Not for the duck. Um, okay. So that's, those are my whips. That's it. Um, I kind of feel like I'm not doing a lot of knitting, but I feel like I'm doing a lot of knitting. I don't know if that makes sense, but I got a lot of projects going and um, knocking some stuff out here and there. It might, I might 
it might feel like I'm not doing a lot because I'm doing so much. And so when you do more, you don't have a lot of stuff coming off the needles because you're splitting time between all these things. So um, we shall see what happens. But I expect that has to be done in a couple days. Um, and then those socks oops, keep going. Um, all right. So um, I participated. So this is acquisitions. Um, I participated in FiberShare this year uh, for my very first time. And um, I, uh, for those of you who don't know what FiberShare is, it is a um, worldwide yarn swap. And you can choose to do a swap internationally or you can choose to do domestic only. I chose domestic. Um, there's a couple thousand, uh, participants this year, um, and so, and the, the, the gist of it is, um, they request that you pay $7, and it's kind of like a good faith $7, so, um, they use that money, um, if someone gets, um, screwed out of receiving a package, and then FiberShare will put together a package to send to you. Um, unfortunately it happens with swaps, um, and you receive a partner that will ship to you and you receive a partner that you will prepare a package for. And so, um, so you have two different partners and, um, you kind of get to know them through Instagram. Um, so I had, um, received, um, a gorgeous package um, from my swap partner um, and her name is Marcy and um, on Instagram she's FF378 and she has some beautiful pictures um, and uh, projects um, so she sent me this lovely package and I was totally blown away by her generosity um, oh the other thing is that FiberShare has these guidelines like you agree to like 200 grams of fiber, um, it can be fiber. Like if you get a spinner, um, you can send them like 200 grams of fiber, fiber that has not been spun or yarn or whatever, um, and you fill out a questionnaire and and they give like the things that they um, they like, they don't like, um, and you go based on those guidelines. And um, so Marcy sent me this package and it was like it just kept going. <laughs> and going and one of the things that um that I mentioned to her in my um thank you message was that it arrived on one of the worst days I had had in a long time and so I came home and saw this package and um it really really brightened my day not only to receive the package but her generosity was so kind um so I will show you what she sent me um and we're going to be here a little bit for this um because it was so nice um, so one of the things she sent me was this beautiful skein of yarn, um, and it is from Expression Fiber Arts. Um, and I really like um, natural colors. I know sometimes, like you know, my um, my rainbow socks are bright and cheerful, um, but I like to spend a lot of time outside, and I really enjoy um, hiking and rock climbing, and um, so. I relate to kind of the colors you find in nature and outside. Um, they really speak to me. And so this was um, from Expression Fiber Arts, and it is the colorway is caramel apples. It's a DK, um, so it's superwash merino wool, nylon, and silk. Um, and I'm thinking this will be a lovely hat. Um, and it's so soft, um, but it's gorgeous. Um, so it's like honey colors. Um, my, the coloring, or the lighting in here is a little funny, um, it's really bright, and I thought it'd be a nice place to hang out, and it is, I mean, I've got the white background, um, which is actually like an oatmeal, and then I have a, right next to me is a huge sliding window, and then I've got one right across the room, and I've got a window, I mean, it's bright, so things look a little funky, but, um, so these colors are a little bit more rich in person. And I'm not as pasty in person, but I look really pasty today. Um, 
Then I got this, which, uh, this, oh my god. It's um, two skeins. Um, let me see if I can, it's browns, but that's purple. Yeah, there we go. It's closer. Let me see if I can block out me and the wall, my lovely nails. Um, so this is um, from Round Mountain Fibers. And it's 100% uh, Superwash Merino. It's from the Ornithology Collection. It's the bird collection. Um, and it comes with these two skeins. One is this gorgeous, like, uh, it's like a mahogany brown um, or walnut brown. It's fingering weight. Um, the color weight is merganser um, brown. And then this uh, this other this larger skein is merganser, and it's uh, 100 grams for this larger one, and this other one is 50 grams, so a total of 600 grams. So I'm thinking some sort of a shawl. Um, so the brown would be a coordinating color. Um, absolutely amazing. And the colors are so rich. Like, they remind me of, you know, like winter trees. So you've got the, the browns from the, um, the trunks and, you know, the branches, the grays. So it's just incredible. Um, this was really, really fun. It is um, Hill Creek Surprise Scarf. And you can see like the different textures in here. There's, um, I guess it's not really like an eye, well, maybe a little bit of eyelash in there. Let's see if I fluff it up a little. Uh, but basically you take um, this whole skein and you cast on 15 stitches and you just knit. So, um, and you end up with a scarf at the end. So that's a lot of fun. There's, um, I love the different textures in here. You have like, you know, some plied yarns, but then in inside there's some singles and you have some eyelashy looking stuff that I'm not going to dig in because I don't want to mess up the um, cake. But, um, and some beautiful colors. There's, the outside is brown, then we get to this green, a darker, oh, the singles have like a blues and browns and yeah, just kind of keeps going. So I'm going to have fun with that. Um, make a scarf with that. I picked up some shoes this morning that I think this will work well with. Um, and then it kept going. We're not done. Uh, this beautiful skein, it's red and black. Uh, and, well, it's like a grayish, like a dark, dark gray. There's some, um, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Um, and it's from Black Cat Custom Yarns Everyday Sock. Uh, the color is Deadpool. Um, so it's 115 grams, 80, 20, superwash merino wool, 20% nylon, uh, 400 yards. Um, it's Canadian and, um, if I can, yeah, some gorgeous reds in there. So, um, this is, I love this. It's going to be fun to knit with. Um, and then, let's see, um, I thought, oh, these smell amazing. Two blocks um, of cedar. Um, they smell so good. I love cedar. Um, so that's nice. These will be going into my sock drawer. Um, keep my socks safe. Well, one of them will go in my socks, and the other will go in a stash drawer. Um, this really fun deck of cards. It's this Conjure. Um, let's just inside here was a beautiful deck of cards a tree of life um and i can see some nature oops nature um themed cards i haven't opened it because i didn't want it to get goofed up before i showed you um and then this really fun little card um and then if i subscribe to her website the maker's website then she will send me a magical treat every month, so I need to do that. I haven't done it, but I need to. Um, so I'm going to go do that. 
um, as the weather changes and we're inside more, we'll be playing, um, the kids like to play cards, so these will be used. Um, this beautiful wood box with the um, pine cone and pine leaves, or pine needles. Inside was a hand felted, this little felted um, acorn, which is so much fun. There's a couple. There's these two little light ones right here. And a beautiful little leaf. Um, but there was some fun stitch marker. Well, I guess it helps if I hold them on the other side of my hand and don't block it. Um, so there's a shoe, there's knit one, there's a typewriter in here, I think. I think there was a, yeah, a little typewriter. Uh, there's a key. So these are really fun. They're gorgeous. Um, so that was a lot of fun to open. And, um, oh, she sent me um, a bottle of honey. She raises bees. She's a beekeeper. Um, and so this amazing um, bottle of honey, which is actually in my cabinet, we've been digging into it. Um, my kids love honey. I love honey. So we've been just taking little spoonfuls of it, which is so tasty. Um, uh, moon Valley Organics. It's a moon melt lotion bar. Um, which smells incredible. Um, that was really nice. I have I have dry skin, um, and so I'm constantly putting lotion on, like both my face, my hands, especially this time of year where we have the season change. Um, ugh, horrible. So this will definitely be used a lot. <laughs> I've run through a lot of lotion in this house. Um, some labels, um, so I can put them in uh, gifts. Um, by soak. 12 labels, 4 phrases. So I'll be using those. Um, pattern, my pattern notes. This is really nice. Um, sometimes I will put a project in timeout and I've had this happen. I get lost. And I'm like, crap. I usually write it down and just like write it on the pattern. But if I've had it happen where I lose that pattern, I'm like, I don't know what I just... I don't know, and then I have to tink it, and then, it, or look for it, or, or go back and figure out what I was doing, um, and I hate that. So, so this will be really helpful. I will use these for sure. It, I, it's much more organized than my method because clearly mine doesn't work. Um, oh, I love this bag bling for bad bitches, yarn snob. I have a bag that I have been putting pins on. Um, this is by Spin Cycle Yarns. And uh, this, I saw this, I was so excited. Uh, this is absolutely, this fits me. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I got, let's see. Okay, and then the rest were these minis. I got a ton of minis. Um, so these beautiful minis. See if I can hold them so you can see the colors and the variegations and stripes. So I got these. Um, and I got this lovely uh, bag of minis. And it's from Handmade by Stephanie. A luxury suck yarn mini skein, mini skein grab bag inventory. So that'll be a lot of fun. I will definitely use these. Um, I have um, not been working on my mini blanket, but I... Um, have a ton of minis to work with and this is great because I you know I can only knit so many socks and have leftovers so this is perfect um so and then it I got this lovely fiber share bag so um so thank you so much Marcy I this was a beautiful package um, I really really enjoyed opening it. it was like the package that just kept going um and that was just so special. Um, so um, that was my fiber share. That was incredible. Um, I'll put this off to the side. So then I had two things that I purchased. And so when I went up to uh, my sister's for my niece's wedding, um, I went into a shop called... The Naughty Lady. Yeah, The Naughty Lady, which is in Roseburg, Oregon. And it's a, a huge shop. 
Um, I've mentioned before, we don't have many yarn shops in the Bay Area, and we certainly don't have anything that close to me. So um, it's a lot of fun for me to visit yarn shops. Um, so I uh, spent a bit of time before the wedding, because uh, it was a late afternoon, evening wedding, and uh, went over to Naughty Lady, and um, beautiful shop, really, really uh, comprehensive list of um, manufacturers, um, some beautiful yarns. I had a hard time passing a lot of things up. I didn't want to um, buy a lot of yarn. I'm trying, I know I say this all the time, I'm trying to knit through what I have um, and be somewhat mindful of my purchases. Um, so, um, and I, I, I'm going to go back up so I can always buy something if I really feel I need to. But um, I did, when I visit these shops um, while I'm traveling, I like to buy something local. Um, and so, um, you know, the, the shop owner was there and uh, she, her dog was there. I think, I think her dog's name is Maisie. Um, really sweet little dog. I was playing with it. Um, but she showed me around her shop some of the local um, um, makers. Um, I wanted an indie dyer um, that was local. And um, so this was what I purchased. I purchased a yarn blank. And it is from Alexandra's Crafts. And Alexandra, I'm assuming, is the, the maker is out of Silverton, Oregon. Um, so alexandrascrafts.com. Um, it is kind of like a rainbow uh, blank. Uh, and this is DK. Oh, you can see better on this side. Um, and so again, the um, and this is a double. Well, the things you learn when you start poking around. So it's a double. And so this, um, this blank has two uh, pieces that I would pull as I'm knitting. Um, I'm thinking this may be, and it's fingering. Holy crap, why did I not? <laughs> I was thinking it was DK. Um, no, it's double knit. It's called double knit sister, which means two, apparently. Um, well, hot damn. So this is going to be a pair of socks. <laughs> Um, and it's a gradient, um, yeah, it's a gradient, so as I kind of roll it, you can see the gradient, um, so, isn't that, Jesus, isn't that cool, so I will have, um, what I just mentioned before, two that you pull from and make a pair of socks, so I'm excited, I was thinking double knit like DK, um, when I looked at it, and when you look at this, it looks a little bit thicker, so I didn't realize it was fingering. I was thinking, yeah, DK, it looks like DK, um, but it's not. So, yes, score for dingling purchases, and um, that worked out even better than you thought. I'm excited about that now. Well, I was excited before, but now I'm, like, really excited. Um, okay, the, the other thing I purchased um, is I joined um, a subscription, um, row one. And um, the, this is, um, this was my second shipment um, since I, I don't have the other one here. The other one's already in the bag. Um, so you get this beautiful little bag. Um, and in there, there's this smaller bag that has the Row One logo um, sticker. Um, in this bag, last month was a progress keeper. This month, there was some candy. It's all gone. Um, caramel corn, or candy corn. Um, not caramel corn, candy corn, which is my one of my favorite um, Halloween candies. Um, that was gone. How's that before I even got into the yarn? Um, and a couple uh, Tootsie Rolls. So my kids each had that, and I gave them a couple pieces of candy corn. I didn't want to share, but I did. Um, so in this little envelope, um, she includes, um, 
and it's Laura, um, includes this little sheet, um, and it talks about the dyer. So row one um, highlights a different dyer each shipment, and this one happened to be from Lavender, Lavender Loon um, Yarn Company. And um, so um, includes like all the names of the different yarns that are included. And um, this is uh, Samantha First is the dyer. And um, there's like a little blurb about um, the dyer. So I really like that it highlights an individual or an indie dyer or an indie maker. Um, because I really like to support the indie uh, market. Um, so um, these are all 80-20. Um, it is 400 yards, 100 grams, and it's all these little minis. And they kind of, I dug into this so it's not packaged as nicely as it was when I opened the original package. Um, but I'll show you a couple. I'm not going to bring all of them up because there's a lot of them. Um, so, ignore my nails. I have terrible nails. Um, so, yeah, really pretty stuff. Um, what I really also like is that um, Laura labels, well, I'm assuming it's Laura because all the packaging is the same in each one. Um, and so she'll label each one with um, the color colorway. Um, so, yeah, we've got 70s, Pop Art, Offred. Um, Offred is from, I don't, my, let's see, it's from um, Handmaid's Tale, uh, Posh Narwhal. I read this and I had the Narwhal song stuck in my head, which is a huge feat because I don't get songs stuck in my head ever. Uh, Poolside Martini, um, Warrior Cats, that's a book. Uh, Primrose. Um, so those are some fun uh, minis. Uh, Felix Felicis, if you are a Harry Potter fan, you'll recognize that. Um, Nick, which is also um, from Handmaid's Tale. Um, but some of these uh, these names are a lot of fun. Like there's Hillbilly Hoot Nanny. Love that name. Um, and then, uh, oh my god, it's a unicorn! Um, so I like that one too. But um, I'm I'm loving these minis, and these will go in my um, Comfy Memories blanket. Um, or, I don't know, maybe I'll make a sock with some Franken minis. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm kind of liking that um, monthly this shows up. Um, and it's fun to open up the, the package and see something fun um, and colorful. And candy corn. I love candy corn. So uh, extra little goodie that comes in there. So that's fun. Um, so check out Row One Yarn um, and um, subscribe if you like them. Um, but it's it's fun. Um, I've really enjoyed that. Um, they also have a she has a really nice Instagram page, so you can follow her on um, Instagram. So Row One Yarn, just look them up. Um, everything I've gone over, I will put in the show notes as as always. Um, and, um, links to, you know, to different shop store makers, if it's appropriate patterns, I'll do that as well. Um, so that'll be in the, uh, drop down in the YouTube, um, as well as on the, um, Ravelry, um, group, um, where I post the link to the, uh, video. Um, yeah. So, um... Let's see, that's it for acquisitions. I was pretty good this time. Um, I just bought those couple things. Um, I have a couple things coming. <laughs> um, but I um, I purchased an Opal advent calendar um, and I just received notice that that shipping from, I think I purchased it from either Germany or uh, the UK, I'm not sure. Um, so that's shipping. And then I have um, a coffee cozy coming. And that's it. I've been good. Um, yeah. Um, so let's see. 
Uh, the last thing um, that I typically do in this format um, is my tip. Um, so this tip will be cast this book. Um, I really enjoy this book. It's called Cast On, Bind Off. Uh, 211 Ways to Begin and End Your Knitting by Kat Cease. Um, this, um, this is kind of a game changer um, for knitters. Um, there are a ton of cast-ons um, and a ton of cast-offs. Um, when you're first learning to knit, Typically, you learn one cast on, which um, often is the long tail cast on. I know a lot of people learn something different, but what I see um, commonly is the long tail cast on, and that's actually something uh, that's how I started um, knitting was the cast on. And I don't even know what the name of the cast off is, but uh, you knit two and yeah. PSSO and then you knit one and you just kind of do that till you're a cast off. I don't know what that one's called. Um, but that's one that um, that I teach um, when I've taught people how to knit. Um, I teach that cast on, that cast off. But it's not always appropriate. Um, different cast ons um, are used in different applications. Like, um, you know, a cast on for socks. Um, you want something stretchy. Uh, if you're knitting top down, which is a, a method that I am comfortable with, I typically will use a German twisted cast on, which gives you a good amount of stretch. Um, some people need something with a lot of stretch. Some people need something with a little less stretch, but you do need stretch because you're pulling it over your foot, your ankle going up to your calf. Um, so you need something that will stretch, but also something that will kind of constrict a little bit when it gets to where it's going. Um, so you need stretch, um, you use the ribbing, that all kind of helps keep your sock from causing elephant ankles um, and slipping down. Um, but, you know, you have your bind off. So, you know, Kitchener's a bind off, three needle bind off, um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Um, you know, there's a lot of bind offs. Um, Cast ons, there's you know Chinese waitress, there's provisional, there's knit cast, um, or knit cast on, there's you know a lot of different ones, and they're used in a lot of different applications. So having a book that shows you a lot of different cast on methods and cast off methods is really a nice thing to have in your knitting library. Um, I like books. Um, but I also find that having a lot of books can be a little overwhelming, especially if you're kind of short on space. I homeschool, so our house is just like book central. And it does get a little overwhelming. So I'm very mindful about the books that I purchase, um, you know, for crafting because I don't, I don't want a lot of stuff hanging around, um, extra stuff that just creates clutter. Um, and so this is one that was recommended. Uh, what I really like about this book is that it will show you a cast on, but then it'll have a matching cast off. So it will say, you know, if you're going to cast on with this, this is this is a cast off that kind of complements it. So for example, if you are knitting a cowl, um, you you want the top of the cowl and the bottom of the cowl to be equally stretchy. Well, one of those is a cast on, the other one is a cast off. So you need to have something that, and they can have vastly different stretch factors. So you want something that kind of matches. Um, so like, um, you know, it would be wholly inappropriate to use like something very rigid um, on one end and something very stretchy on the other. It just, it, it doesn't really complement um, your project. So I highly recommend this book um, as a really nice um, addition to your knitting library. Um, let's see if I can um, find something. Uh, there is a section, sock cast on. So like, let's say a rolled edge cast on. Um, well, if you're knitting top down, you're going to want to use a kitchener with that. So maybe that's not such a great 
that's not a very good uh, example. Um, let's see. There was a section where it showed a really nice... Um, yeah, Twisted Italian Castle. I've never heard of that. English Castle. I've never heard of that. Um, I'm going to have to try some of this stuff. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, okay. In the beginning, this is what I was looking for. Um, so it has cast on and bind off pairs. So it, in here, it'll have pair the following cast ons and bind offs to create matching edges. So there's a really nice chart. Um, like chain cast on um, would be the cast on and a standard bind off would be, you know, a complementary bind off. Um, long tail cast on would be a sewn bind off. Um, tubular cast on would match a tubular bind off. Um, so, you know, there might be a Pico cast on, Pico bind off. Um, so the other really nice thing about this book is it has um, this kind of chart on this page and it has one for cast ons, one for bind offs. And it talks about the purpose of each uh, method. So, um, let's see, I'm not, not terribly good. So, so like right here, it has the purpose of the cast on or on the side, it's the bind off. Um, and then right here, it'll list, um, you know, the different cast ons and bind off that, that fill that purpose. So I'll just give an example, like, um, let's see for socks. Okay. So your cast on, um, would be backward loop sock, closed toe cast, or these are cast ons. So backward loop sock, closed toe sock, easy toe, figure eight wrap, Judy's magic, Patty's closed toe crochet chain, rolled edge, straight wrap, the best toe up for magic loop. Those are all cast ons for socks. Um, and it's nice. It also tells you which page to find those on. So for bind offs, let's say you have a ribbing. Um, ribbing is something you would find um, on a cowl, on a sweater. Um, maybe on a hat. Often you don't knit top-down hats, but some there are some patterns out there that I've seen. Um, so you'd go from like the crown all the way down to the ribbing, and that's where you would bind off. Um, so for bind off, you would have cable, decrease, elastic, Jenny surprisingly stretchy, Peggy stretchy, ribbing, Sarah's favorite, stretchy, all tubulars, two row, and yarn over. Those are all different cast offs for ribbing. So I um, recommend this. This is a really great addition to your knitting library. Um, so there you are. That's my tip. Um, okay. Last thing um, was my uh, introduction of five things. Um, so five things. Um, and I mentioned this in the beginning, um, I would like to introduce you to my, um, to people that I craft with. Um, and so, um, for the last four, five years, four years, um, I have attended a bi-weekly knitting group, um, that meets at our local library. And, um, through that, um, I have met some really fun people, um, some amazing people, and um, love them <laughs> a whole lot. Um, and this group is really um, a lot of fun for me to attend. And so I thought it'd be fun to um, introduce you to some of the people that I um, hang out with every other Saturday. And so um, my first five things guest was um, Colette. And, um, boy, we're, we're starting this one with a bang. <laughs> um, she is a lot of fun. Um, and, um, so I kind of surprised her. I didn't tell her this was coming. Um, so we're sitting at knitting. I said, hey, you want to, you want to be on the podcast? And she's like, yeah, of course. Um, so she, um, didn't know what I was going to ask her. Um, 
I uh, kind of surprised her. We started off benign and some calming questions, and I'll just let you see what happened. I'm sorry, I'm fixing my hair and burping. Um, and so call it. Um, she lives pretty close to me. Um, and let's see what else can I tell you about call it. Uh, she has no filters. Um, so you never know what's going to come out of her mouth, and this was so funny. Um, so I hope you enjoy. I will insert the video here um, so you can see uh, what five things looks like. Um, but I will be featuring this on every podcast. So um, some of them will be a little bit more tame. Some will be kind of wild. Um, yeah, so enjoy. No, you're good. I am okay. You're good. So I'm starting something called Five Things, and this is my thing, um, my first thing. This is Colette, Hi. Um, and you can find her on Ravelry as Cole Pispisa. Okay, and I don't I'm know on Instagram. Yes, I'm All on right. Instagram. Okay. So uh, Colette nine four five six zero. Okay, so Colette nine four five six zero. Um, so I'm starting something called Five Things, and I am going to be pulling knitters from the community and asking them five things so you can meet other knitters that are local to me and maybe someday not local to me if you come visit. Um, so I have five questions that I'm going to ask Colette and she doesn't know what I know it is. she won't show me. <laughs> this could be really bad. Very, 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 <laughs> very, very bad. I'm gonna warn you, I don't have a filter. Colette has less of a filter. <laughs> I have no filter. I don't even have a coffee filter, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're starting out kind of benign. Um, so, how long have you knit or crochet or both? You may okay. do both. Knit high school, and no, I'm not going to say how long ago that it's was. A long time ago. Yeah, very long. <laughs> Let's old. say I had what my 20th class reunion. So, kind of do your math. So, yeah, yeah, a little okay. while. And which is your primary craft? This is not part of oh. the five things. So I'm just asking, so you know. Um, knitting. knitting. Okay. Because so my primary... sister crocheted, and I didn't want to do anything that she did, so I knit. Okay. So. Um, how did you learn? Believe it. This is how old I am. Okay. There was no internet. <laughs> there was no not. YouTube. What do you do? I got a book. And Jesus. I mean, can you imagine? I had to freaking learn from a book. And it was a paper book, I'm assuming. Paper, yeah. yes. It wasn't yeah. digital. No download. Right. It was shocking. So yes, from a book. So Okay. Do you remember what book? Oh, God. Who knows? It was from Joanne's yeah. or Michael's from... Or something. Something. something yeah. Okay. Um, and what are you working on right now? Good question. Since I just started learning to crochet because my kids are like weird. The best book in the world. I love this book. The Tweaky Chan. So this very big, humongous, strub, uh, what do you call it? Banana split thing. Nice. Mm -hmm. I did not realize how big it is. <laughs> like I said, the banana alone took me like two and a half days. It's 36 inches. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah, it's it's huge, but I love her little, that's how I learned to crochet actually. Is uh, Tweaky Jam? From her craftsy class. Oh, fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very fun and oh. I like it. Okay, right. and I just noticed there's little animal cookies. Oh yeah, like isn't that animals. cute? I was like, oh, animal cookies. If you're from the Bay Area, we have Mother's Cookies. They're probably available other places. Are they even open anymore? You can still buy them here. Oh, that's right. But these little cookies with the sprinkles are big here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so we're all raised on animal, yeah. on Mother's Cookies. Mm-hmm. So what do you like to do while you're crafting? What this may be a loaded question. <laughs> we're getting a little bit more loaded. What do loaded. I do? <laughs> other than watch TV and... Actually, I walk around the house when I'm crafting. I have a little project bag and I, do this. Mm -hmm, I walk around <laughs> the house. I homeschool the kids, so I'm usually homeschooling or I'm cooking dinner. And then, ooh, I have two seconds to knit a row. Yeah. Ah, knit my two rows. And... I've seen you walking around stitches knitting. Yes. So I, she walks in stitches. I have oh, worse walking. yet, I go on the treadmill and I knit <laughs> mother bears on the treadmill. Oh my and gosh. so far, I have not like fallen and killed myself yet. But yes, I knit and well on the treadmill. That's can my we, favorite can we place to be. Put a GoPro on you. <laughs> I know you should. I want to catch I that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the time I trip and fucking eat it and eat shit. Yeah, that would be. Oh, there's my cousin. <laughs> that, that, that would be it. Yes. So. Um. Okay. So yeah. Okay. 
it's nothing worse. I don't do anything really kinky while the treadmill or, <laughs> or getting. <laughs> and this is question five, so oh. here we go. Um, what is your funky hidden talent? Oh, girlfriend, I have the wrong shirt for that because I, I can make my boobs dance. But we, <laughs> but we, luckily, I'm wearing the wrong shirt, thank God. <laughs> I would have my boobs bouncing and talk. Yes, I can make them talk, yeah. That's another video. That's another video for another time. It's a great first five. Isn't it, though? The boob, the titty dance. <laughs> but again, uh, that's another video. <laughs> Come to my YouTube channel. You can watch titty dancing. <laughs> so, hidden talent, yes. Nice. I thought so. Well, thank you for being on Live Things. <laughs> I had no idea you had this talent. Yes. It was remind me sometimes to show you that. After a few drinks, we can go out now and knit. Well, I can teach you to do I'm all titty good. Dance. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are still there after that. That was so, so much fun though. I had a great time. Thank you very much, Colette, for um for joining me. Um and um I don't know who will be next. Uh it's kind of a potluck. Um, but there will be more. Um so I hope you enjoyed this um episode of Dirty Knitting Hippie Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Um thank you for supporting me and coming back and watching. If you enjoyed um, what you saw today, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and you will get notifications that a new episode is coming. And um, you can follow me on Instagram as uh, the Dirty Knitting Hippie. You can follow me on Ravelry as uh, Tyler's Mom Chris. I always have to think about that because they're different. Um, Follow me on YouTube. Join the, um, there's a group on Ravelry, Dirty Knitting Hippie Podcast. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, you can post in the Ask Me Anything thread. Oh, one thing that I did not mention um, is if you are a maker, there's a maker thread. And please feel free to advertise your Etsy shop or your website or whatever. Um, yeah, free advertising. Help yourself. Uh, knock yourself out. Um, and I think that's it. Um, be good to each other. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Bye.